friends, so today I'm going to do another project for you and this one is actually a project that was requested uh, by you guys. So definitely leave a comment down below if there's any particular project you want me to try. Uh, of course, I can't do everything, I am working from home, but um, anything that, that is possible to make from home, I'm very happy to do it uh, and show you guys how. So let's get started. So today's project, I want to show you how to make a spoon. Now there's a bunch of different ways to make a spoon out of ceramics, but I know two ways that I think are quite effective. So the first way, what you need are a model spoon. So this is going to be your uh, sample. We're going to make a spoon sort of more or less in this shape. You need a rib, you need a rolling pin, a knife, and of course some clay. So first I'm going to start with rolling out some clay. You don't need very much clay. I would guess this is about 200 grams. As always, when you're rolling it, make sure you're not rolling it all in one go. Make sure you're flipping and you're turning the clay as you go. And with a spoon, you don't want to get too thin. All right, so here's our rolled out piece. Now, as always, when you roll a slab, you want to compress the clay. So I'm going to use my rib to kind of stroke the clay and this helps the clay not to crack later on. So now we want to just cut out the basic spoon shape. So I'm just gonna lay the spoon on top of it and cut out a rough shape. So I'm leaving a lot of extra room around it just so I can start to get the clay a bit smaller and more the shape that we want. Okay, now I'm going to flip the, side, the spoon upside down. We're gonna use the spoon as basically a form here. So I'm going to lay the clay on top of the spoon and start to shape it around so that it sits flat on the spoon. Decided to uh, make it a little bit shorter than the spoon because a lot of long, thin ceramic doesn't work so well. So now I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes so it can firm up a little bit before we uh, go in and cut out the final shape. So in the meantime, we can move on to the second spoon project. Uh, but with this project, I'm going to make the round part of the spoon separate from the stem of the spoon. For the second spoon project, you'll need some water, a paintbrush, a scoring tool. If you don't have a scoring tool, you can also use a fork or a needle tool and a sponge. So first I'm going to start with a round part and I'm going to take a small ball about the size of a strawberry. Right. I'm going to roll it in my hand until it's quite round. Yeah. Then I'm going to push it down onto the table until it's a little bit flatter. Still quite round but a little bit flatter. Right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my thumb right in the middle of it to start to make like a donut shape. But of course I don't wanna go through because otherwise we have a leaky spoon. So um, I'm going to just kind of dig my thumb around it a little bit to um, bring it about a half centimeter from the bottom, maybe three quarters of a centimeter to the bottom. Then I need to start to make this into more of a bowl shape now. So I'm going to start pinching the clay into a bowl. So I start at the bottom and I'm going to just bring my finger all the way around. So I'm pinching between my finger and my thumb. And I'm just kind of going around. As you start to get these cracks in your clay, that's totally normal. Um, you just want to smooth them out as you go. This is kind of a cracky clay, but I like to use it because it's so beautiful in the end. and bringing it into more of a bowl shape. Now I'm just gonna shape it with my hands a little bit to get it a little bit more smooth and rounded. Now we have like a tiny little bowl here, right? 
So that part is done. We just need to add the stem now. And so I'm going to take another similarly sized piece of clay and I'm just going to make a long coil. So I'm gonna start by rolling it in my hands a little bit to get it a bit thinner. And then as it gets a bit thinner, I'm going to start rolling it on the table. The key to rolling a coil is that you spread your fingers as you are uh, pushing the clay back and forth and you want to not put so much downward pressure um, while you're rolling the coil. Most of your pressure is back and forth and you just let the weight of your hands uh, thin out the clay. Um, if you do too much pressure, that's when you start to get these like flat coils and it starts to flop, flop, flop. You need to um, not put so much pressure and just roll it back and forth and the stretching of your fingers will just bring the coil out naturally. So I wouldn't go too thin with this. This is a bit thicker than a pencil. Anything long and thin in ceramics is notoriously fragile. So I always err on the side of making it a little bit thicker. I mean, remember that it is going to shrink down again once it's finished. Okay, now I'm just gonna kind of think about how I want this. Do I want it to attach up at the top or at the bottom? I think it's obvious that I should do it at the top. So I'm actually going to then flip it over and uh, I think what I'm going to do, just to strengthen the uh, stem a little bit, I'm going to bring this clay up onto the bowl a little bit so that I'm not just butting them up against each other because that's gonna make a very weak seam. So I'm going to allow uh, the stem to kind of co come into the circular shape um, and form kind of an interesting design element as well. But before I do that, I'm gonna quickly shape the end. So then like always with uh, attaching two pieces of ceramics together, you want to score. So we're going to use this scoring tool to scratch the part where the stem attaches to the bowl of the spoon and also the stem itself. So these two parts that come together, they'll get scratched. And I will add a touch of water to each of them. help that process along. So, place them, and then I'll hold it with my fingers on the inside to kind of push the two together, make sure I get a really good attachment here. Then you can just set it aside, let it uh, dry out a little bit before you uh, continue to clean it up. Okay, now we can go back to our original spoon. So it's a little bit stiffer at this point. And now I'm gonna go in, it's still a little bit fragile, but I'm gonna go in now and cut the rest of it off. So <clears throat> you can just follow the line of the original spoon or you can make like an interesting pattern to, on the stem itself. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of bow it out a little bit. So I'm gonna first draw it with my knife. I'm gonna do something like. So once you have your spoon shape final, just put it back on your spoon mold and I'm gonna let it settle into the shape of the spoon again. And then I'm gonna let this dry pretty well. I mean, it's very thin, so it's gonna actually dry pretty fast, um, but uh, maybe like an hour or something would do. Um, or you can put it in front of the fan for five, 10 minutes. Just check on it. Once you can't bend it so easily, once it's not so floppy, that's when you know it's finished. Okay, so these two spoons have uh, actually chilled underneath the fan for a little bit. Um, it's been maybe 20 minutes under the fan and they're quite stiff. So I'm not going to 
put too much weight on it, but it's like, it's not falling immediately down. Um, but I'm gonna be still very careful with these pieces. Um, I just want to do some final touches now to clean them up and then I'll let them dry fully. Now, anything with thin clay is very, very delicate, so you just have to be careful during this part, not destroy your piece. <laughs> so I'm just gonna add a touch of water. So you don't wanna add too much water at this stage. I'm just doing enough that will only saturate the surface of the clay and not get down into the clay, because otherwise you'll just have undone the drying process. When there's little nooks and crannies that you can't get into, it's always helpful to use a wet paintbrush. So I'm pretty happy with this piece. I'd say it's pretty much done. I don't dare uh, continue messing with it because um, danger zone. Um, so I'm just gonna flip it over and let it dry uh, in its rested place where it's completely supported. Now, I'm doing this one last because I'm actually really afraid of this one. This is so thin and uh, dangerous. So I'm um, just going to very gently go over all of these edges. So my goal with a sponge is just to kind of round the edges so that they're not so sharp anymore. But my goal is also to not let it get too wet. And then with this one, I'm just going to let it dry on top of the spoon form to, so that it keeps its shape. All right, and that's, that's it. <laughs> so you can sign them if you want. You can add uh, carvings or decorations on them if you want. Um, but I would just let these dry out now and uh, they can get ready to be put into the kiln. So some tips about glazing them. I mean, obviously you cannot um, glaze the whole thing and put it into the kiln because then it will melt to the kiln shelf. So um, you have to be kind of clever when you're, when you're going about glazing spoons. Um, one thing you can do is you can put them on stilts. So um, there are these little metal things that can go inside the kiln that can prop your piece up. Um, I'm not gonna do this because this is dangerous. So there's these little stilts that you can put um, your piece on and that allows the glaze to be covering the whole piece but it separates the, the piece from the kiln shelf and they don't usually stick to the stilts. However, you do usually end up with marks from the kiln stilts themselves. So I personally don't like using them because you always end up having to sand them down or doing something to fix that problem. Um, so my favorite way of doing glazing with spoons is you build sort of a ceramic um, a holder for your pieces. So you just need to like make like out of uh, clay a tube to hold your piece. So like you can just take a block of clay, put a hole in it, and that will hold your piece up like this, right? In, in the kiln, it will hold your piece up. Of course, then you cannot glaze the whole piece. So you can glaze all the way up until it's going to touch the clay. Uh, if you glaze the whole thing, then it will stick to that clay support system. Um, so that's my favorite way of glazing spoons. I don't make spoons regularly. I've just done it a couple of times. Um, so I, I haven't experimented too much with making them. Um, I'm sure that there's other ways to glaze spoons, uh, but I would really recommend the uh, standing upright method rather than the kiln stilts. Um, but of course, both are possible. Um, and if you're not going to be using your spoon to eat out of, which most people don't use ceramic spoons to actually eat out of, you know, you're gonna use it to like scoop your coffee or I don't know, whatever you use ceramic spoons for, you can just leave it unglazed then. I mean, if you're not literally putting it into your mouth or using it with like an acidic uh, thing that you're going to eat later, so you don't need to glaze it actually. Uh, that might make it a little bit easier for you. So go forth and make spoons. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. How do you end videos? So I hope that, vid that uh, demonstration was helpful for you. I hope that you guys have a lot of fun making spoons. And if you do make them, uh, please post on Instagram and tag me because uh, I would love to see them. So you can find me at Pottery to the People. Um, so see you later, see you next time. <laughs>